Hi, my, my name is Derek and you're watching the dev blog for Bayside Games. In this dev blog, we're creating a particle manager system. So now that we have our quad drawing up on the screen, um, this would actually be a great time to test one of uh, Marmalade's other features, which is um, its cross-platform nature. So up until now, we've only been running in the simulator on x86, which is effectively the PC platform in, in the Marmalade. Um, now Marmalade does support deploying to the PC platform. Uh, you can actually create a full standalone PC executable, which is very similar to what we've been doing. In fact, it, it runs through most of the same code. Um, it just packages it in a slightly different way. So all we need to do to run it, for instance, on my iPhone, uh, which is just an ordinary 3GS. It's a fairly old phone. It's nothing flash. Um, it's to pick the right configuration here, GCC ARM release. Um, you can also do debug, which is uh, if you actually want to debug things a little bit on the phone and get trace messages. But release is like the final, final build. And then you just hit this, um, you, you do start debugging on it, and that will launch the AirPlay, uh, the Marmalade, actually, the Marmalade deploy tool, that name change always throws me. Marmalade deploy tool will eventually come up. Okay, so let's deploy our executable. Just going to pop it on my desktop. That's for iOS, and that should be all I need to do. And I've just checked it on my phone, and it works fine. So the quad is showing up perfectly. Um, so that it literally took me about 30 seconds to get that working on the iPhone, which is pretty good. And it would work on Android and BART and a whole bunch of other platforms too. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, when we run this, um, the first thing I, I notice is that we actually only have the one particle. So let's start changing that. So let's get rid of the breakpoint. <coughs> so right now, as you can see, I mean, our particle is pretty small, but it's there. I mean, it's being drawn at the origin and everything. So the first thing I'd like to do is to attach our particle to the player who's busy jazzing around over there somewhere because I've gone into a debug camera here. So let's do that. Oh, I'm still complaining about that texture. We'll have to check that we're destroying our texture properly. So the texture should be deleted over here. But what's most likely happening is that we're not calling destroy on the particle container. So this is good. Um, this um, out of m this memory warning has actually given us uh, a good uh, sort of kick in, kick in the pants. What we need to do is we need to destroy all of the um, particle containers in here. So the way I'm going to do that is <coughs> so when the particle manager is destroyed, it destroys all of its particles. So all you do is you go through the list, same as in the render or the update methods. Actually, I'm just going to copy it verbatim. This time I'm just going to grab a pointer. And I'm just going to delete all of the containers. And then finally, I'm, I'm going to clear that list. And that should do the trick. Uh, theoretically, that will, if we go look at the destructor of particle container, yep, that should delete our texture. So we'll just try that. And let's close. And that's perfect. Okay, so no more memory leak. So that was the little one. So in order to attach this particle system to the player, it's really quite simple. We need to look at where we created first in our robots can't jump lane file. Um, I put a big comment around it to make it easier to find. I'm glad I did that now. Okay, so when we add a particle container, if you recall correctly, if you look at the signature, we give it a position. So instead of just giving the origin of the world here, what we want to do is we actually want to give it um, the position of the player first off the bat. So this will help it be initialized the right place. So I believe game app has a get um, actor manager, which is where all our actors go in the player is just a normal actor like everything else. And we can get the player. Now the player object is an RCG player reference. So let's have a look at his methods. And luckily for us, the player already has a get position method, um, but it returns the wrong type. It returns a, a bullet physics SDK vector is very similar um, it's just a floating point vector basically luckily I already have a little function that can give me that I'm just gonna check a complete type it's not that it's a little bit silly because um, the type is need right up there so don't worry too much about that luckily I already have a little utility function called um, bgvec to iwvec3 
which is not very complex function. It literally just initializes a CIW vec3 from a bullet floating point vector using the floating point conversion functions. So that's all we need to do there. Okay, so that's going to give us our player on the first frame. And I'm just going to compile and see why it's still got red on that. Uh, okay, I understand what's happening here. Uh, what we need to do is we need to pop in the player class. So we want the actors player .h. Um, because the actual player class which we're using here isn't isn't included so that should get rid of it for us okay so the next step once we've done the first frame is for every subsequent frame we need to update that so we can just do that in the test so that's easy enough um, but the problem for us here is we should actually start thinking about you know how is this going to be updated um, calling a function every frame is going to be pretty inefficient uh, what I would probably do later on is have some way of hooking these particles up to a bone or something like that. That's probably going to be the most common thing. But for now, what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to cache off the particle container that's created as a static. So over here, just very similarly to the manager in the way we create and manage its lifetime. Um, and that way we'll have a handle to this particle system that we can use to then set the position, the center position of the particle system every frame. So we have to have some sort of a handle um, because that's pretty much the way we manage the lifetime. So I'm just going to create it here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do an assert that it was created just to be safe. And we'll need to update that now. But before we do the update, let's just clean it up. We won't need to render it because that's already been taken care of for us. So this is all just temp code. These lines of code are going to be going away soon. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move them into a special section. Over here because I don't want to check this stuff in. Um, it's purely for testing purposes. So there we go. Okay, now let's look at the update again. So the particle manager updates itself, but the position of the player may have changed uh, since the previous frame. So we've only set it once in our particle container, and that's its initial value. Now what we need to do is we need to set it every frame. So we know we have a pointer to the particle container, and all we need to do now is call set pause and give it the same position pulled from the actor as before. So that should update it every frame. Now, one other thing I've noticed here is that we're using these pointers without checking them. So I'm going to put in an assertion. It's a very bad practice to use, use a pointer just sort of arbitrarily like that without checking that it's, or testing its value in some way, either using an if test or something like that. So we've still got a bit of red here, and I'm not really sure why. Let's go and have a look. Ah, oh, of course, we forgot to put the channel in. So IntelliSense really doesn't like it when I use this, but that's okay. It's looking fine now. And I think there's some at the bottom that we need to do too. Yeah, these are actually using old school C asserts, so it's better to use the uh, IdeaWorks version. Um, they look once once you start developing on the phone, um, IW asserts actually come up in a nicer way. Um, we'll go into that in, in a tutorial on debugging sometime. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick a breakpoint in here just to check that everything's kosher, and let's try that out. Oh, we got some errors. Um, let's have a quick look. Okay, so what's happening here is uh, we have an unresolved symbol for particle container set pause method. So let's go and see what's going on if we just get rid of this breakpoint. So set pause, it's been declared, but it's not been defined, which is a big problem. Let's have a look here. Oh, okay, I think I see what's happening. So set pause, yep. What we need to do is just assign the position. I'm not sure why I didn't do that when we initially wrote the class, but that should be all we need to do. Okay, let's try that. And that's looking really good. If you look closely in the corner here, you'll see that the um, 
the player has got the particle attached to him and the camera is just going everywhere but you can see that when he moves the particle system moves with him so that's pretty much exactly what we wanted okay so i'm really happy with that okay now we're getting into a very interesting error we're attempting to free an item oh i think i know what this is okay we made a mistake so this particle container has been destroyed twice and i'll show you why it should only be destroyed once obviously we've made a fundamental mistake in the way we designed our class in that we've allowed people to actually delete it when it shouldn't be deleted when only the particle manager which is in here uh particle managers destructor and the remove particle container the destroy particle container function should be the only functions that destroy these objects so we've actually allowed people to do this when we shouldn't have and the fix is very simple i'll show you how to do it if you go into the particle container header file you'll see that the uh, constructor and destructor are public that shouldn't be the case what we should do is we should move these and make them private so I'm just going to pop them sort of here, probably near the top so people could see them. There we go. Okay, and then put a comment. These are private because only particle manager should construct particle container objects. Great. Now we also need to do a friend declaration so the particle manager can do that. Excellent. Now particle manager should not need to be changed, but now very with very interesting things gonna happen if you look at um, Robert's can jump. See we have this pointer here for our particle container that we create. Using the uh, add particle container, that's valid. But look more closely at where we destroy it in the shutdown function where we destroy all the other stuff. It's got all of a sudden it's got a red line under it now. Why is that? So the particle container's destructor declared at line twenty eight it says is inaccessible and that's exactly what we want we don't want people to randomly delete things because when they do this we're actually going to get out of sync with the rest of our class because it might still be sitting in the list and you know there might be like a dangling pointer uh, pointing to garbage or a reallocated heap block and that's really bad bad news so all we're going to do is we're just going to set the pointer to null and put a comment no delete needed particle manager will do that for us just so that if somebody else comes along they can see that that's okay and now when we run this we should be able we should be fine okay looking good let's close it and then we're fine so no more crash because we have not got a dangling pointer anymore great so now that our particle system is attached to our player um i've noticed something interesting in the way that it's attached it's actually attached to his uh, bottom right hand corner and the reason for this is because um, our player gets sort of transformed. So I'll show you how that how that works. So when we render him, due to the way the uh, model gets exported, we actually have to do some uh, rotations on the player just to get him into the right space um, so that he looks right and that he lines up with our uh, physics models and everything. So what we actually want to do is not use the position of the player but we actually want to use his physics position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try and grab that from his rigid body. I believe that will solve the problem and put it, it should be sort of near the center of the player, but that may actually cause another problem, which I'll show you shortly. Okay, so when you're uh, dealing with these sort of things if you look at get rigid body you'll see there's a whole bunch of stuff but um what i would like to do is if you look closely there's a get pause in here somewhere oh, okay actors don't allow you to do that but the physics well there's two different positions there's the position of the actual mesh and then there's the position of the rigid body so if you look here when the actor is being rendered and its mesh is being drawn it uses the rigid body's world transform or get origin. What I'd like to do is I'd actually like to put that 